Here's a demo program that uses string variables. Uh, we must add the pound include string compiler directive at the top of the program. And uh, having done that, we can now create a variable, declare a variable that is has the data type string. Instead of int or double or bool, uh, the data type is string. Instead of setting it equal to zero, we set it equal to null string, also known as empty string. Two uh, quotes typed next to each other. This program allows me to enter my name, and then it prints out my name. So just like integer variables, such as numbooks, we can type input with C in, and we can print output with C out. Let's run the program up to that point to confirm that it works. The program allows me to input my first name. And it prints out the first name. Next. Uh, it even uh, can tell what your first initial is because a string variable is really just an array. The first letter in name is really uh, considered to be the uh, letter that's in position zero. So I run the program again, typing John as my first uh, name and the letter J prints out because it's in position zero. The last letter of my name could be accessed by typing uh, the number that corresponds to the position of that last letter. 0, 1, 2, and 3. That N is in position 3. But this version of uh, the output displays the length of my name as 4 and continuing with this theme I run the program again here with the system pause return 0 at that point typing in John leads to the uh, output that the very last letter of my name is N look at the notation here in the Cout statement the length of the name is uh, obtained by typing name.length. Name.length is 4 in the case of John. And 4 minus 1 is 3. So this program works as if we had the number 3 hard-coded into the square brackets. But of course, that wouldn't work if our name was uh, Bob, because Bob has a length of 3 where John had a length of 4. So to make this program flexible, instead of hardwiring the, the, the program with a specific number there, we can make use of the name.length method, subtract 1 from it, because arrays always start at position 0, and a string is really just an array of letters. And by putting all that in the square brackets, it very compactly, efficiently, always is guaranteed to print out the last letter of any name. Let's check it out and run the program with uh, different uh, names of different lengths. Uh, the word uh, Bob, the program does print out that the last letter was B. I run the program with a long name, like Ricardo, and the letter O does print out as the last letter, because the length of Ricardo is 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Last of all, something that you can do with strings uh, that you should know for uh, the final exam is uh, that they can be uh, alphabetized. By using the less than symbol, alphabetically, uh, the name such as John will be less than M, and therefore this program will print out that John is less than M. If we run the program with the name Zorro, the Z is not greater than M, so uh, it will end up printing that your name is alphabetically greater than M. Let's test the program with John and Zorro. Zorro. John. John is alphabetically less than M. I run the program again with Zorro. And Zorro is alphabetically greater than M. It's interesting, though, if I run the program and type a capital Z for Zorro, 
it says that your name is alphabetically less than M when Z is not alphabetically less than M, it's actually greater than M. Because uh, strings are compared uh, in a case-sensitive way, all uppercase letters, A through Z, are considered to be less than all uppercase letters. I'm sorry. All uppercase letters are considered to be less than all lowercase letters. See the lecture notes for more detail on, uh, on that uh, issue. Finally, this program uh, will uh, concatenate and join together two strings using a plus symbol. The string named greeting, the string variable named greeting, is really uh, stores the word goodbye. And that whatever name I type in earlier, those two are glued together and printed out in one line of code with this plus sign. We are not adding numbers like 2 plus 3 equals 5. We're actually adding strings together, and it's called concatenation. Let's check it out. The program prints out goodbye John, and notice the space between the two words. I did hard code a space in there, right where I'm waving my mouse, so the program works and looks nice.